This episode of the Model 3 Owners Club podcast is brought to you by Doolaban Insurance. If you live in Ontario, Canada, and are looking for the best price and coverage on your Tesla, give Doolaban a call at 1-855-385-4226 or visit our website at doolabaninsurance.com slash Tesla. everyone it's time again for the podcast want to apologize last week i was feeling a little under the weather so we kind of skipped it uh not to make any excuses or anything like that but there wasn't too much tesla news but hey we saved it all up and there's even more this week we've got some late breaking news but before i do that i want to bring in my usual guests here mr eric camacho and ian pavelko gentlemen how are you doing this evening hello 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 bonsoir tout le monde <laughs> how are you guys feeling though uh... <laughs> You go first. You go first, Eric. I am, well, uh, first, glad you're feeling better, Trevor. Um, Thank you. A lot of news this last uh, few days have come out, especially today, uh, some news breaking on this Wednesday uh, regarding autopilot, which we'll get into. Uh, I just know that my car is parked out front. I, it's on the Wi-Fi network. I'm just hoping for an update tonight. <laughs> It'd just be great to get an update on my what do you, phone. What's your firmware? What are you running on now? Do you know? Uh, I believe, I have to check my app. I think I'm running on 8.2. I don't think I have 8.3 yet. Well, I was in firmware jail since mid-December. No, I'm sorry, I, have, I, I do have 8.3. I do apologize. <laughs> I, I was in firmware 8. jail since mid-December, and I finally got an update yesterday. I got 8.4, uh, yeah. 8, 8. and I did a, a, did a quick video on sentry mode because I wanted to test mm -hmm. Everything else is working, but sentry mode isn't now. I have a feeling it was because my key fob was too close to me, even though I put it in the backyard, so it could be that. I'll test it some more. I'm waiting for the warm weather this weekend because, like Ian, I'm dying to get my summer wheels back on. Of course, you've already mm. done it, so. <laughs> I did. Well, he, could, I, it, he, could, he couldn't wait. No. Well, the thing is, I can cheat because I have all seasons and I have summers, so I'm kind of like phasing in. I'm at the all seasons phase, phase, and then by mid-May, hopefully, we'll get some summers on. But, I mean, everyone's pestering me to, to do the new 0 to 60 run, right, with, uh, with the new power update. Yeah. So, like, the first day, it's like... 21 degrees Celsius, around 70 F. Yeah, yeah, screw that. You know, the big the big fat Yokos are going back on and ripping <laughs> down the street. Matter of fact, I even want to um, and bought myself a two-ton proper jack because I'm fed up. That none of the car, uh, the mobile tire change places are, A, responding to my emails. They're probably book solid, even though I'm trying to do it in advance. And, uh, two, the prices seem to be out of control. So I figured, you know what, for, for the price of two of those changes, I'll just buy a new jack. So and I've got my pucks that I'm going to use from Mr. Uh, Pierre Shampoo. Nice that he that he sent us. So I will uh, I'll do uh, I'll do my wheel change this uh, this weekend and give the car a good cleaning and uh, pull out the front trunk, give it a good cleaning too. So, anyways, enough about cleaning. We got some stuff to talk about. We do. Um, let's see here. The, well, the very first thing uh, came out today, actually yesterday, because something else came out today. So let's just talk about this. Um, actually, it's earlier today. I, I apologize. So mm -hmm. Tesla. Uh, let's pull it up so everybody can see is hosting an autonomy investor day on April 19th. I'll just read the blurb here real quickly. Tesla is making significant process uh, progress in the developments of autonomous driving software and hardware, including our FSD computer. That's the old hardware three. Tesla is actually calling it FSD now. So we got to get into that new nomenclature, uh, mm -hmm. which is currently in production and which will enable full self-driving view future over-the-air software updates with a number of very exciting developments coming in the next weeks and months ahead. Tesla will host investors on the morning of April 19th at our headquarters in Palo Alto to provide a deep dive into our um, self-driving technology and roadmap. Um, they also say the event will be webcast. So Ooh, details are to oh, follow. Nice. So hopefully we get a chance to see this thing in real life. I mean, the last mm -hmm. time Tesla demonstrated full self-driving was that model x video that they did back right. in 2016 and since then total quiet mm -hmm. um yes we've seen lots of developments uh you know with autopilot through you know blips and blobs you know being sent out over the software updates but the full autonomy thing has been mired in complete secrecy as far as tesla's concerned so very interesting to see what they're going to be able to pull off i think this is going to be I think it's going to be interesting. Now, they did say in the thing that the, the, the computer is actually in production. They didn't say if it's actually being installed in cars yet. Mm -hmm. So that remains to be seen. And, of course, for those of us who bought FSD, uh, we're entitled to a free upgrade to that computer when the time comes. 
So yeah, yeah. that's uh, some good developments on that front. On that note, just, just just while we're talking about the very thing, Trev, a lot of people have been asking, like, when am I going to get my FSD computer? When am I going to? Mm. And I thought an interesting thing that uh, Elon tweeted this week was that apparently uh, the new FSD computer does not work as well with EAP as the current one does because the current one is optimized for the current level of EAP software. So don't be in a huge rush to get it until we get FSD software or something that's optimized to work with the new FSD computer. You're actually better off with the hardware that you have. So don't don't feel denied or like, oh my God, I got to get the new computer. It's, it's not a big deal until the software catches up. Apparently what we have now works best. Yes, agreed. Yeah, so don't be in a rush. Right. I know it's exciting and it's there. We've paid for it. We want it as soon as possible. But until soft, you know the software is actually updated for it, mm -hmm. uh, don't expect to get any uh, any advantages. All right. Um, next on the list we want to jump into is navigate on autopilot. Hopefully uh, approved for Europe soon. I'll just bring up the uh, the tweet because somebody had gotten on on March 26th, and I know this is a little bit old news, but we might as well give it out there. Um, somebody in Europe was asking uh, any update on software updates. We'd like to have, uh, you know, navigate on autopilot, which hasn't been released in, in Europe yet. And Elon took to Twitter and says, glad you like it. Navigate on autopilot, hopefully approved for Europe soon. And we have seen some software updates that come out. Um, let me see, who is it? Um, Michael uh, Russo, who's one of the uh, forum moderators, uh, received 8.3 recently. So I have to talk to him, see if he's gotten it in a subsequent update. Again, it's a regulatory thing. The U.S. Mm -hmm. tends to get these things first. Even in Canada, we're about uh, the last. Uh, Navigate on autopilot it took us uh, just, I think it was just over a month to get it. So in other jurisdictions, Europe is seems to be even more conservative than Canada when it comes to this stuff. So it's coming. You just got to be patient about it. Any thoughts on this? I think it's exciting. Yeah, it's good. The, the more the more the stuff sort of starts trickling out, the more uh, announcements that we're hearing of this stuff. It's just great because now we're going to, really see more of the feedback come from more places. We're going to see more people using the services yeah. um, and the features and that, that just, it's just, it's all great news. So for those of you guys who have been waiting for a long time, just a little bit longer, <laughs> just, a, just a little bit longer, you know, and then we can really see this fly off. Yeah. Well, I think I was kind of hoping that Tesla would smooth out some of their software updates. I mean, model three has been getting so many updates recently that of course, you mm -hmm. know, the S and X were left a little bit behind, but now we've, you know, finally got, some of that stuff up to uh, up to par, but we're not done. There's even more on the autopilot front because Tesla released another uh, blog post this morning, and this one what? is about introducing a more seamless navigate on autopilot. So basically, what they're going to do here is release in waves in the U.S. first, international countries later as regulatory approvals happen. But basically, they're saying. Today, we're beginning to roll out our latest version of Navigate on Autopilot for a more seamless um, active guidance experience. In this new version, drivers will now have the option to use Navigate on Autopilot without having to confirm lane changes via the turnstock. Here's how it works. In the Autopilot settings menu, a driver can press the Customize Navigate on Autopilot button, which will now display three additional settings. Enable at start of every trip, require lane change confirmation, and lane change notification. Through the enable uh, at start of every trip setting, navigate on autopilot can be set to automatically turn on each time a driver enters a navigation route. Once enabled, every any time a driver is on a highway and uses autopilot with a location plugged into the navigation bar, the feature will be on by default. If a driver selects no to require lane change confirmation, lane changes will happen automatically without requiring a driver to confirm them first. Drivers can elect to, set, uh, to get notified about an upcoming lane change by receiving an audible chime as well as a default visual prompt. Additionally, all cars made after August 2017 will also have the option to have their steering wheel vibrate uh, for the alert as well. Um, so, yeah, very exciting. This is, uh, I mean... Gosh, we're really flirting with level three at this point. Um, again, this does not require FSD. This is enhanced autopilot um, mm -hmm. feature at this point. Um, some of the other stuff that they've claimed for FSD is still kind of down in the future. So um, exciting times. Uh, you know, I don't know when we're going to get this software update. Again, it's starting to roll out in the U.S. So uh, before much longer, we should be able to see um, some, some videos of this in action. Um, of course, mm -hmm. if I get it, I'll... I'll I'll do something on there. Um, what do you guys think about this? 
this is getting exciting. I'm going to turn it on all the time because I like it. <laughs> well, what's great about this is that in the announcement today, um, Elon, I believe, subtweeted Tesla on this announcement. And he had said it's actually more exciting than what it sounds. Um, so I've, I've used uh, navigation on autopilot for quite a bit. And uh, the times I've had it, more often than not, it has been a great success. There are some instances where I, you know, it asked me to confirm and I'm like, let's go ahead and change lanes. And then because of other drivers here in Florida, they like to kind of gun it when they think you're trying to get in front of them. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like waiting for the lane change, but the car will certainly have its patience more so than I, the driver might. And then once it feels like it's able to make the change, it'll do that. Now I've had mine on uh, Mad Max mode as well. So I'm I was like, just about just, to ask what mode you had it on. <laughs> I would say, let's, let's just get in there. But yeah. even at Mad Max mode, it's still a very conservative change it's certainly not yeah. slow but it certainly is not like the way i would drive which is like er, kind of just zip in there um what's interesting about this blog post and kind of reading a little bit further down too they do share that more than half a million miles have already been driven with the lane change confirmation turned off so that's actually pretty interesting uh hearing that so that kind of gives you an idea of how much mileage it's already seen with the feature uh deployed whether it's been confirmed or not confirmed or anything else um so yeah i'm looking forward to as these updates begin to reach the vehicles how they how they uh materialize um i for one would want to have it turned off just to see how my 25 mile commute goes mostly on the highway from where i live to where i work uh if it happens with um you know getting into the hov lane and getting out of it no fantastic we'll give it a go but so far it's been pretty good uh but i'd like to be able to try that with the uh confirmation turned off my biggest gripe with Navigate on Autopilot is that it, it gets confused when you get close to an off-ramp, you know, when it takes you to an off-ramp. Yeah. And in my area, you know, there are some areas where there's construction, and sometimes the lines, um, you know, uh, open up, and then right. they come back together, or they're not quite enough, and the car starts to get into the lane, and then it gets confused and says, no, no, I want to get back out mm -hmm. again. So hopefully they've smoothed. Hopefully they'll smooth that out. I did notice on yeah. the latest update that I got, the 8.3, I don't know if, I mean, uh, the display on the autopilot, you know, the cars were always doing the funky chicken. They were always, you right. know, they needed some kind of smoothing algorithm. We've talked about this on the podcast. And sure, sure enough, they've actually done that. It's much, much smoother. This morning I mm -hmm. went downtown Toronto and um, it <laughs> saw... zombies. You, do you like my zombies this morning? <laughs> I was sitting at the stop and I could see all the people going across. And I happened to look down and I'm like, hey, there's people this time. So I figured, you know, I'd do a little video and stuff. So that was kind of fun. But yeah, I, I really like the new display. It's much, much smoother than it used to be. It displays more lanes. So, yeah. I mean, they're making tremendous amounts of progress now compared to what they have done in the past. So uh, kudos no, to the Tesla's say, autopilot The team. one thing I would agree with you is, and I've noticed this before, if I do have a address uh, put into my navigation and I have... Uh, NAO turned on, um, it would or NOA rather. Uh, it'd be great if, as that exit's coming in, it just knows to take the exit. Now, whether that's part of a level autonomy that it's not ready for yet, maybe that's going to be something that rolls out later on. That'd be great. Um, but it would be nice if it just knew to took the exit rather than just try to stay in the lane that I'm in. Um, so we'll we'll see if in the coming months there's a change for that. But autopilot's been so much smoother as of late. Um, yeah. I've had fewer issues, and I and there's a good chunk of I-95 uh, on my commute to and from work that is like yours under construction, where the original lanes have been sort of paved over, or at least they've taken the paint off. They've put new paint markings, and my cars relatively handled it very well, even at full highway speeds of 60, 65, 70 miles per hour. So, um, so that's good to see, but I, but I think, um, yeah, there's that, that one little thing, which is just take the exit, you know, it's there, you know, it's where we got to go. Just go ahead and get off. Yeah. I, I got to say my experience with 8.3 has not been good. Um, the first thing I noticed was that, yeah, you, you don't get the funky chicken moves anymore of the surrounding cars, which was nice. It was really smooth, but the actual performance of the system is the worst it's ever been in my car. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. I was really shocked by that like not horrible but like uh, at first the first thing i noticed is when you're um approaching slower cars in front of you and it's got nowhere to go in other words it can't shift out to a kicker lane um i find the speed adjustment quite jerky it's like a student driver's at the wheel all of a sudden it's like wow and it's kind of hunting to find it never did that before it was really smooth slowing down and then accelerating no it, it actually jams the brakes in a couple of cages it's a braking level but like 
there's this sudden lurch that I never experienced before. So that was I, I yeah, I've had a few of those too. I mean, it seems to hesitate. I mean, the car is cautious. It's it's just being cautious yeah, but, on purpose, right? Yeah, but but there's caution and there's there's being there's smooth cautious and then there's jerky cautious. I got jerky cautious is how oh, really? I would describe mm-hmm. it. That still didn't bother me so much. I mean, you know, it was kind of like one out of every four adjustments was doing that. Um, but what drove me nuts was I drove up to see the kids in uh, Wakefield, which is just north of yeah. uh, Gatineau, north, north of the uh, capital here in Canada, of Ottawa. And, um, you know, that's two hours each way. It's the perfect time to use autopilot. It didn't want to know from me. And all we had was rain. We, we didn't have any, like, it wasn't sleet. You know, there wasn't two inches of snow on, on the bumper covering up the radar. And it just constantly bugged out. Like, lane change not available, this not available. It's like I cleaned the camera 17 times. Nope. Didn't, didn't want to know. Back. Didn't want to come back. I was like, what? Yeah, so. we were downtown Saturday, this past Saturday night. We went to the movies, and we came back, and it was raining all day, and then temp- temperatures dropped to the point where the rain just turned into snow. Whiteout conditions, driving home on the highway, lost autopilot, lost radar, no traffic aware cruise control, like everything shut down. It just basically said, that's it, you're not getting anything. So, you know, when people ask legitimate questions as far as, you know, Tesla's full self-driving, is it going to handle winter conditions? Uh, they got a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what's strange is that the day after that trip, and I, I did some bug reports on it, the day after the trip, I got 8.4. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm curious to see if, if some of these issues have been resolved in four. I, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to go, but I'm, I'm going down to the States tomorrow. So I'll, I'll be able to report back. We've had a ton of reports of problems with um, at least 8.3 on Model 3s on the forum. I mean, things like lagginess when you put the car in reverse for the reverse camera to come up. Yeah. Uh, spontaneous, I had that yeah uh, spontaneous screen reboots are like rampant. I've had a couple really? on mine too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tons of them. We got breaking news. Oh, yes. Okay, go ahead, Eric. What Tesla, do we have? Tesla Q1 2019 vehicle production and deliveries Ooh. are now Ooh. announced. Excellent. No way. All right. All right. Let's this dive in. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read the news wire as do it. Tesla, this, do is, it. this is on their website. Uh, in the first quarter, we produced approximately 77,100 total vehicles, consisting of 62,950 Model 3 and 14,150 Model S and X. Deliveries were approximately 63,000 vehicles, which was 110% more than the same quarter last year, but 31% less than last quarter. This Ooh. included approximately 50,900 Model 3 and 12,100 Model S and X. Hmm. Due to a massive increase in deliveries in Europe and China, which at times exceeded five times that of prior peak delivery levels and many challenges encountered for the first time, we had only delivered half of the entire quarter's numbers by March 21st, 10 days before end of quarter. This caused a large number of vehicle deliveries to shift to the second quarter. At the end of the first quarter, approximately 10,600 vehicles were in transit to customers wow. globally. That's because of the lower than expected delivery volumes and several pricing adjustments, we expect Q1 net income to be negatively impacted. Even so, we ended the quarter with sufficient cash on hand. In North America, Model 3 was yet again the best-selling mid-sized premium sedan, selling 60% more units than the runner-up. Inventory of Model 3 vehicles in North America remains exceptionally low, reaching about two weeks of supply at the end of Q1, compared to the industry average of two to three months. Despite pull forward of demand from Q1 2019 into Q4 2018, due to the step down in the federal tax credit, U.S. orders for Model 3 vehicles significantly outpace what we were able to deliver in Q1. We reaffirm our prior guidance of 360,000 to 400,000 vehicle deliveries in 2019. I'm going to end it uh, here shortly. Given that Tesla vehicle production currently occurs entirely from only one factory in the San Francisco Bay Area, but must be delivered to customers all around the world, production could be significantly higher than deliveries, as it was this quarter when production exceeded deliveries by 22%. We've just begun the global expansion of Model 3, and we want to thank our employees for their hard work and our customers for supporting our mission. We are doing everything we can to deliver cars globally as quickly as possible and look forward to continuing to scale deliveries throughout the year. So, so it's a it. logistics thing. Yeah. yeah. Who we knew? kind of expected that. Still good. I mean, they were warning for some time that Q1 wouldn't be as good as uh, the last quarter, but uh, this is a logistics thing, and uh, they will get it sorted out. 
but mm -hmm. uh, still some good numbers. I mean, 10,600 vehicles in transit, that's higher than it's ever been. Yeah. More than double, I think, was the highest number. I think it was around 5,000 vehicles in the past. So, well, that just means we're going to have a better Q2 because um, I have a feeling they're going to start switching over to North American deliveries at that point and hopefully start introducing the standard range Model 3 because there's huge pent-up demand for that car. So, all good news. Thank you, Eric, and, for that. And hopefully like the right-hand model will start uh, delivering very soon, too. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um... Let's move on to another little bit here. This comes courtesy of Tesla Roddy. And let's just bring it up here. Tesla is pushing a dynamic brake light update. Now, this is for Europe only. That warns drivers of rapid braking. Uh, here's a screenshot for those who uh, want to see this. If you're watching on YouTube, apologize if you're listening to the podcast. Sometimes you got to go and see the visuals. But anyway, so the brake lights, it says, uh, if you're driving over 50 kilometers an hour in a brake forcefully, the brake lights will now flash quickly to warn other drivers that your car is rapidly slowing down. If your car stops completely, the hazard warning lights will flash until you press the accelerator or manually press the hazard warning lights buttons to turn them off. Um, I know there's some people that have been demanding, or, or not demanding, but asking to have this feature in North America. I think if this is something that you would like to see, um, you know, send it off to Tesla. I don't think it's a regulatory thing um, in North America that we need this. It's probably something they had to do expressly for Europe. But if it's something you like, send them out. I mean, there's just so many updates. I mean, this last update that we got, I know for me, anyways, because it was so far behind. I mean, it was just, I mean, the release notes just went on and on and on. Mm -hmm. so there's quite a bit of stuff in there. Uh, so thank you, Tesla Roddy, for that article. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. In car browser. Yes. Um, well, Elon took to Twitter and said that they were going, I, I can't pull up the screenshot right now, but he did say that the browser, which is much maligned in all Teslas, um, is going to get a <laughs> is going to be switched you're, over you're, to you're being kind. Yes, <laughs> that's very diplomatic. Way yes, to put it. Uh, literally the yeah. feature I never use in my car. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, so eventually it's going to be upgraded to the Chromium, which is the more recent release of what Google uses, um, uh, you know, WebKit. So looking forward to that. Which, by the way, if for those that do a lot of web streaming, Chromium is great for uh, the interaction with video. So if, as it's planned down the line of introducing YouTube, Netflix, <laughs> things like that as apps that maybe can work with the car, uh, it'd be great if they were playing on Chromium because you would actually have a, a better playback. Just throwing okay. it out there. Okay. I will sure. I will say, just on that note, I found in somewhere in one of the last updates, my browser's working a lot better because it was complete useless crap when I first got the car. And just in the last month or two, you know, like I can run the Tesla, what's it called? Tesla Waze, I think, yeah. is the uh, the one where you can get it up on the screen. And it was it was a complete fail before. Now it works nine out of ten times, which is... Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey, that's cause for celebration. Yes. <laughs> Let's go out and have, have a web party. Yay. <laughs> All right, uh, the next little one here comes, again, courtesy of Tesla Roddy. Uh, Tesla is to work on location-based aware uh, bioweapon defense mode for those who have Model S or Model X. It doesn't apply to 3 because it doesn't have the filter. Um, again, uh, Tesla is adding more features to location-aware functionalities in the car, much like the latest update that we got with uh, location-aware folding mirrors. I actually used it for the first time today. I set my location for home. Sure enough, pull up the course of the house and the mirrors fold. So um, I don't know how much I'll use that. But um, And I don't have bioweapon bio weapon defense mode in my car, although there is a retrofit kit you can buy. You can buy the filter and have it enabled. I think it's $500 US uh, to be able all? to get that. Yeah, yeah, they it's dropped fine. the price. It used to be 700 now it's, all, uh, it's five. So basically what they're going to do is uh, give you a location-aware um, bioweapon uh, bio defense mode so that if you live in areas um, that are prone to pollution or let's say you have wildfires, which are very common in California and stuff, you'll be able to enable that um, and have it left on for whatever you want. So um, another great use of GPS functions in the car. I mean, what else can we want? I mean, Earl was the first one who went out on Twitter and asked Elon, begged Elon, to have the folding mirrors on location on um, uh, yeah. location where because he knocked his mm -hmm. off I think within the first week of having the car. So uh, Bridge just did that on the Volt last week. Yes, I heard about that. Uh huh. <laughs> How much is that going to cost to fix? <laughs> I believe it or not, I found a used one on eBay in the actual correct cyber blade color for next to nothing. That's why I'm going to Malone tomorrow to pick up. So. Oh okay. Yeah, I'm not uh, not too peeved about that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. 
Um, so much to cover. We're going to get in here. Um, some leaked videos have been posted on uh, onto the interwebs and YouTube um, about about advanced or enhanced summon, which is the one where you can pull your car out of the parking lot. Uh, there's been several ones. This is one of the nicer ones I was able to pull off, and this is courtesy of uh, Melinda Vermeer, who's one of our forum moderators, oh, yeah. and uh, she took this video. Um, unfortunately, you guys can't see it here, but I am watching it. Uh, somebody is basically walking their red Model 3 around in a parking lot. So the guy is standing way over by a uh, trailer there, and he's got his uh, phone in his hand, and he's pulling the car towards him. It's interesting. The car actually goes in reverse, not just forward. So this yeah, car is actually backing that. up. Was yeah, cool. so, yeah, so the car is actually backing up, and at some point in the video a little bit later, he actually moves location. He walks around, and the car actually follows him. I think Elon had tweeted out that, uh, you know, uh, you'll be able to walk your car around in a parking lot, much like a puppy dog. So, um, compared to some prior videos that we've seen with Enhanced Autopilot, um, or Enhanced Summon, I should say, correction, um, it is much faster. Um, the first ones were like basically granny mode, and this thing is actually mm -hmm. usable. Yeah, that was encouraging to see that yeah. it's it's already progressed that fast. I'm um, I'm thinking we might actually be able to use this. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, you know what? Summon is not something. I'll, I'll just I'll just stop the video here because you know you guys. I'll put a link in the video description. You guys can watch it, or the podcast uh, description. You guys can watch it. Um, summon is not something that I actually really use on my car. Um, I go to car shows. Okay, you do the dog and pony show, and you give them a little demo, or whatever. Um, I did use it the other day though. I parked. <laughs> On Saturday, I was in a puddle, and I got out of the car, and I'm like, oh, really? So I did use it once. Um, but this, yes, I agree with you. This is a function that I, uh, I'm i looking forward to. I'm actually looking more yeah. forward to the reverse, which is part of full self-driving, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, which is the par uh, seek and park mode, uh -huh. which is, yeah. you know, release the car, let it go find its own parking spot. So Tesla has actually put that in the FSD description on their website. So if that's a function you want, you got to spring for FSD. I'm hoping there'll be a thing where it's like find find an empty spot with no cars on either side, like or go completely to the other end of the lot. Like I wonder if you'll good be point. able to tell it that, you know. Like, good, good point. Go park at the other end where there's yeah. nobody around. Exactly. And, but you know, the thing is, is that sometimes you'll do that and you get this herd mentality. Mm -hmm. You ever mm -hmm. seen that? Even though you put your car out there and then you yeah. come back and you're like, why? There's nobody well, around. Why is, do you got to park? <laughs> it is is an why? affliction. It is an affliction upon society. <laughs> it is the same thing that happens when I go to a movie theater. The theater could be completely empty. I find a seat somewhere like in the back near the center. And for whatever reason, anybody comes in afterwards has to sit either next to me or in the row adjacent on either side, front or back. <laughs> and then it just keeps going. I'm like, y'all can't just pick a different seat. Really? You have you have to sit next to me. I mean, I know I smell good. I know I, 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 I'm funny. But seriously, can, we, can you go somewhere else? If I wanted to go sit with people, I'd stay home. Like, get out of here. <laughs> I agree with you. All right, uh, moving along. Another article, uh, courtesy of Tesla Roddy. The very first right-hand drive Model 3s have been spotted. Uh, looks like Tesla built a small batch oh, of yeah. these cars. Um, you know, as with anything, they build, you know, small batches to test out things like uh, processes at the factory, assembly, you know, make sure that they've got the production right, and then eventually they will uh, start production. So uh, hopefully it won't be too much longer for people to be able to get these cars. Um, you know, Elon did take to Twitter uh, just recently and said that they were expecting to have deliveries, um, at least in Australia, in their winter, which is our summer. So it shouldn't be too much longer, hopefully, if, if the production actually does um, uh, smooth out as they expect to. Um, mm. It should be pretty good. They're saying, um, let me see here, Elon Musk has estimated a September 2018 timeframe availability in Europe, but that was last year. So they're running a little bit behind on that. But um, uh, let's see here. Anything uh, pertinent in the article? I, I love um, re reading the Twitter feed on that. It was fantastic. Look, there's people in the UK. They're kind of like yeah. looking at it. It's like, no, did somebody flip the image? Has it just been reversed? No, no, look, you can read the thing in the background. It was like the, the you could feel the excitement from across the pond. And, and I don't have it here, but there is a YouTube video that someone did, and I didn't have it uh, prepared for the show tonight, but somebody oh. did get a ride in this car. It is definitely a right-hand drive Model 3. So, won't nice. be too much longer, guys. I mean, we're excited for everybody to get these cars, and you know, thirty-five percent of the world is uh, right-hand drive. So, yeah, they're all waiting for this car with bated breath. So, hopefully, mm -hmm. it gets out there as soon as possible. All right. And which, uh, by the way, we're already seeing the impact of Model Three in Europe with just the left-hand drive. Yeah. We're not even seeing what's going to happen once they go right-hand. 
<laughs> uh, production deliveries. Okay, next little one here is um, <clears throat> something we dug up on Reddit. Someone had uh, an experience uh, testing out uh, Tesla Supercharger V3, and uh, I'm just going to pull up the uh, Reddit post here. Uh, the Reddit user is uh, private, uh, private, private or Bach. He says, uh, another tryout of the Tesla Supercharger V3 today started from 9%, left with 90% within 35 minutes. It quickly jumped to 255 kilowatts just seconds after plugging it in, stayed for 15%, and the, tamp and the taper kicked in. He says, he says tamper, but it's ta taper. Mm -hmm. um, after four minutes, and the SOC reached 23%. The power reduced 177 kilowatts, then it goes down. So he's basically saying uh, from 9 to 50% is about 12, uh, 12 minutes, 9 to 60 is 15, 9 to 70 is 19 minutes, 9 to 80% is 25, and 9 to 90 is 35. So, wow, this is, uh, this is very incredible. I mean, that, that's amazing. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to that. Of course, you know, Tesla did say that they will be upgrading the current superchargers in waves to 145 kilowatt, I think it is. So those of us who have the older technology, S's and X's, will also get a bump. And uh, hopefully the whole sharing of the AB thing will largely go away because at 145 kilowatt, if you split it. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I should say that, that the individual stalls will go to 145 kilowatt. So that means that even though those cars can't support 145, you will get 100% rather than 50%. Trevor, are you sure on the old V2 superchargers? Because I thought that only applied to V3, that there wouldn't be any splitting. I, I, I understood, and I, I might stand to be correct on this, but I thought the old generation superchargers will go up, but they're still going to be splitting. Uh, okay, well, let me let me correct myself. They will be increasing the power to those units, so it will largely, it, we will still get a bump of approximately 25% in combined yeah. with the supercharger preheating of the battery um, yeah. in advance, plus the bump up in speed, so... You know, the AB thing probably won't matter all that much. But again, it's a future thing. They have to roll it out. Um, I should make a point of saying that the uh, Supercharger V3 is only for new construction and largely for probably sites that don't already have permits because whatever's permitted, of course, is what was already in place at the time. So any future ones that are going to be built that are not in the permitting stage permitting electricity is available and stuff. Trans Canada, Trans Canada, yeah. Trans Canada. Hopefully we'll get the V3. Yes. Well, you know what? I was at a Tesla meeting last night, the Ontario Tesla Owners Club meeting, and we had an excellent pres um, presentation by one of the members who did a road trip out to uh, PEI just this past September. And uh, th the superchargers on the East Coast, at least, are, are growing. I mean, there's one in Allack, and there's two or three others now that are popped up. So there's a definite chance that there's a possibility we may decide to go out East this summer for our road trip. We delayed it last year. We were going to do it last, last summer. But... Uh, because there was just not enough supercharging, uh, we decided to just wait. M mostly on the point because my wife wanted to do A, B, C, and D th <laughs> all in one day. And I said, that's just not going to happen. Um, yes, I have the ability to use my Chatamo adapter um, to get around some of that stuff. But again, even with Chatamo, it's less than half the speed of a supercharger. So anyways, logistics aside, that's what we decided to wait for. So it's encouraging. And, you know, Elon, even at the Model Y we're vet, I mean, he mentioned Saskatchewan. It's definitely on the priority He did. I because... love that. That was <laughs> one of the highlights of the whole show. Yeah, so looking forward to that. So anyways, supercharging V3 is super, super impressive. So really looking forward to being able to test that. You guys are going to be blown away when you get a chance to check this out. Okay. Um, talking about, uh, let's see here, uh, supercharger. Uh, you know what? Another Me article. Too. Yes. Yeah, well, this one's from Reddit again. Um, again, Private or Brock. Um, he says, it's a uh, surprise that a buddy of mine gave me those specs and numbers. Here's a car. Uh, Model 3, uh, is this? Yeah, Supercharger V2, 147 kilowatt hours unlocked with the latest uh, 2019 7.11 test firmware. Uh, they tested it in Petaluma, which is just north of San Francisco. Um, that site's been upgraded, so they started 145 kilowatt at 15% SOC alone with 147 kilowatt around 50% uh, SOC at 117 kilowatt, 60% SOC. So more pictures. Let me see if I can bring up this picture so you guys can see it here. Uh, yeah, so 140. Yeah, if, if, you, if you put the link in the description for those of you guys who were listening to this uh, podcast, uh, there was actually a screenshot that was taking of the charging. The yeah. prior story we talked about, um, there's a video in that story for the V3 charging, uh, but it shows the uh, energy in uh, kilometers per hour because uh, it was 
uh, based in uh, metrics because metric is better. But for, for those of us who were not <laughs> metrically inclined, uh, my car, tonight, I supercharged actually on the way home tonight, and my car got the 500 miles per hour before it started tapering off. In nice. the screenshot here, uh, the SOC is at 44% as the car is charging. It's showing a charging rate at 627 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty significant um, uptick from uh, the V2 that most of us have come to know already. Yeah, I'm, I'm really anxious to see what the curve looks like on the 147 setup, because mm -hmm. uh, I, if it can hold, you know, longer, <laughs> that would that would make a pretty significant difference. It'll make a nice bridge till, until we get more V3s around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, OK, moving along, we got some more stuff here. We will get to um, viewer and listener questions here very shortly. We're just going to get through some of the news here. Um, let's see here. I know, I know a lot of people have been asking about the situation of the anticipated CCS adapter um, available in Europe at this point for Model S and X owners. And uh, Electric got a, uh, a tipster, sent them some pictures and stuff. So this image comes courtesy of Electric. So this is, the, this is what the adapter looks like. So one end, uh, you plug in the CCS adapter from the Tesla superchargers that have been equipped with the new cable, and the other end has the standard uh, Tesla connector, uh, well, the standard connector for Europe, which is the Manichaeus Type 2. So this is what the adapter looks like. There's no pricing at this point um, that I can see. Uh, let's see here. Max charge rate up to 120 kilowatts. So anyways, hopefully show up soon. And, and I know some people have been asking in the past if we're going to actually see a CCS adapter in North America. Um, again, we don't know what the situation is. There is always the possibility that Tesla may do the same thing in Europe, uh, in North America they did for Europe and retrofit the uh, superchargers with the secondary cable and maybe switch some of the cars over. I can't, again, they can't do it on an S and X because of the charge port location on the car. There's just no room to put a CCS um, monster adapter in there. So for the time being, at least for the S and the X, we're gonna use the standard connector that Tesla does. Of course, the Model 3 has a larger charge port and that was deliberate because you know they were going to do that. So anyways, uh, thank you for that. Uh, that's the first indication of what that is. And of course, it answers one of the questions that we're gonna get into here shortly. So maybe we can skip that as we go. Um, any last thoughts before we get into viewer and listener questions, guys? No? Nope. It's all good. All right. Well, guess... let's, we're going to take a short break here. We'll be right back, and uh, we'll answer your questions. Fine Lab has a line of protective coatings that were engineered to protect your Tesla's paint, leather, carpet, plastic, and wheels, effectively blocking all those UV rays and environmental factors before they ever get to ruin your brand new baby. Fine Lab offers a complete line of car care products and ceramic coatings for both the do-it-yourselfer and professional detailers. Did we mention we also have the world's first self-healing coating? Check us out at finelab.com, that's spelled F-E-Y-N-L-A-B, to see the science behind the self-healing. Check out our product catalog and click contact us for a free quote from a certified installer in your area. Fine Lab and Tesla, we were meant for each other. So the first question comes from uh, Wilson. He says, uh, what are your thoughts as to why Tesla didn't utilize the driver interior facing camera in their Sentry feature, or are they? Dun, dun, dun. We don't know. Listen, I think Tesla's thinking forward. Um, just in case you might be new to the podcast or new to this dog and pony show, um, Tesla, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Um, Tesla has said that one of their next tentpole features as far as the master plan part two in the next few years is a tesla ride sharing network so there's been a lot of speculation as to what this camera is going to be for um and you got both camps you got people that say it's for driver monitoring and tesla did say that they attempted to do that didn't work so they abandoned the idea so who knows what they'll do with the camera in the future whether they will implement it for the ride sharing network for monitoring of passengers for the owner of the car um or they may just reprise especially with this new hardware level three computer fsd computer maybe they can revisit that i know that there are some big proponents out there alex roy for example is a big proponent yeah. of yeah, uh, driver player. monitoring uh, because he th seems to think um and probably legitimately that level four and level five you need to have some kind of driver monitoring systems in order to 
to cover everything. So anything is possible. We don't know what Tesla's plans are at this point, but they did say that they abandoned the idea, but it doesn't mean that they can't reprise it now that we have a more powerful computer literally just around the corner. So thank you, Wilson, for sending in that question. I hope it answers it, but again, we don't have all the answers for this stuff. Um, next question, which is somewhat related, comes from Tesla Fun. It says, looking at the recent added century mode, the MCU processing is, is, uh, is required more. Is the MCU the brain for all the function, or is it another separate processor to run these features? Um, I believe that the sentry mode um, is just pulling a feed from the cameras, uh, from the autopilot, because all the cameras go into the autopilot uh, computer, and then the MCU that runs the cars is a separate computer. So on the Model 3, you have an autopilot computer, and you have the MCU. On an SRX, you have a third computer, which is the one that runs the uh, instrument cluster display. Um, I've noticed on my car that the processing power is really starting to chug uh, on mine. I mean, they're really beating the hell out of this thing. Um, the MCU on an SRX is still an older NVIDIA Tegra 3 computer, the circa 2012-ish, 2011. So it's starting to show some age. Now, the newer cars, of course, if you bought a new car since, uh, I think it was May of 2018, they come with a new Intel-based MCU. So it seems to have lots of legs on that. Of course, the Model 3 has an Intel-based one. Lots of horsepower on that. Um, who knows what they're going to be doing? I know us on mine uh, that if you use the dash cam function or the sentry mode on mine and I put the USB key in, um, uh, there's lags. Every time it writes a file, there's you know a gap of like a second or so. It just mm -hmm. there's just not enough, uh, there's just not enough horsepower in the MCU. The autopilot computer I think has plenty of horsepower, but it's a dedicated machine. It has nothing else to do, as far as I understand, with the running of the system. So. Um, so yeah, I think that's where that's where things are going. I, I think the Model Three and of course the S's and X's with the newer computer have lots of um, lots of horsepower to be able to do um, newer things as they go. And of course, this is this is not the end game. They're they're going to keep upgrading the systems as they go. I mean, this stuff is not going to sit around forever. So I, I hope that answers the question. We will we will see, as we say. <laughs> By the way, I'm just throwing it out there, maybe because. Um... Endgame is coming out pretty soon, but I cannot help but see MCU and think Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you buy your tickets? I, I can't. I can't. I, I've been immersed in Marvel uh, for the, I don't know, 10 years now. So like, I can't see MCU and think of computer. So... I, I think I saw somebody me. posted on the internet the other day, um, almost like a flow chart of all of the new, <laughs> all the movies and the timelines are happening. Man, like, I all right. So I gave up around Spider Man. If, if that you was guys it. are fans of the Marvel films like I am, um, I am missing out of the premiere coming up on April 26th because we're recording our show. We recorded our show on Thursday <gasps> nights, uh, except for this week, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna be missing out. Everyone's gonna be posting about this on Friday. I'd be like, shh, don't say anything. No spoilers. Nothing. I don't no want to know. No spoilers. <laughs> No, but yeah, that's 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 a big thing coming out. We're only like three weeks away, so. Dude, we could do another Wednesday. It's not the end. No, of the it's fine. It's already, everyone's got their tickets. It's already you, okay. So what you're really angling for is the whole martyr scene here. Okay, all right, I get it. No, 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 <laughs> not at all. No, oh, not at all. Okay. I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> that the movie will be there on Friday. It'll be there Saturday. It'll be there Sunday. Okay. Likely, the longer I wait, the more seats I'll find. But of course, as I mentioned before, I'll sit in the theater and the next person coming in <laughs> is going to sit within three feet of me. So what does it matter? So, Don't worry. It'll be like Disney, you know, back in the old days. It was like, for the first time on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be able to get that. Anyways, let's get back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this. Um, next question comes from Vern. Now, Vern sent us several questions. And unfortunately, oh Vern, God, we've got so a... many, we can't answer them all. But we will uh, tackle a couple. Um, Vern asks, I live in Illinois between Springfield and St. Louis, one hour from each other. The closest dealers in St. Louis, how does service work for anyone so remote? Say I have a warranty issue and I can't even drive the car to St. Louis. Will a mobile ranger come that far? Will cost be high? Will I need to go to St. Louis? Close service center may actually be in Indianapolis. So the answer, uh, Vern, is uh, mobile service will come to you. And I'll give you an example. Um, Canada, for example, is a very large country. <clears throat> now, most of us live within about 100 miles of the U.S. border all the way across because it's just too damn cold up north. Yeah, 50% Anyways. <laughs> of the Canadians live like within 100 miles of the U.S. All, yeah, exactly. And we like have that. nowhere near the amount of service centers. So Tesla Canada has put so much effort into the mobile service. Now, to answer your question, in your case, mobile service will come to you. The Rangers will come to you. It's 
there are only certain circumstances where the cars need to go on a lift. And this is something that uh, that John McNeil, who used to be at Tesla, um, who left last year, made a, a good case of saying that, listen, most of our service is firmware or small little fixes that don't require putting the car in a hoist. So why don't we put more effort into the mobile service? So that's exactly what they're doing. So if it's warranty work, you don't have to pay for anything. It's included in the cost. I mean, we've had lots and lots of reports of this stuff. They come to you, they fix it. It's not a big deal. Um, so that is your answer as far as that's concerned. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Um, again, you can use your app if you have any uh, issues with the car. You can service. Um, you can make your service appointments right on the app. I've done it. It works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you may not get a service appointment right away, of course, with your situation being, you know, kind of far from each other and stuff. But I would suspect you probably be able to get an appointment within about a week or so, or maybe even less. So, okay. Uh, Vern asks a second question. Um, how does a trade-in work with an online order? I currently have two vehicles. I, uh, if I don't like the price given for one of the vehicles, can I then see what the price would be for mm -hmm. vehicle number two? Do they take the vehicle from me when it's delivered? So, yeah, trade-ins. Seen this happen lots of times. So first thing you need to know is that um, Tesla will not give you top dollar for that car, <laughs> whatever it happens to be. Uh, they're not in the used car business. Um, your trade-in is going to go to auction. So if you want, here's my advice. If you want a good trade-in value, um, A, sell it privately. If not, go to CarMax. You'll have much better luck there. Um, Ooh. if you're going to trade in, oh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. So here, here's my suggestion. Uh, so the, the key is this. So Tesla uses, uh, Kelly blue book values in the U S to appraise the cost of their cars. Now, um, I, I don't know if this holds true now, now that they've sort of gone to an online environment, but it used to be that if you went to CarMax, as Trevor's suggesting now, and you got an estimate from CarMax, which is good for seven days, if you brought the estimate to Tesla and it's higher than what Tesla's offering for your car as a Kelly Blue Book value, for example, then they'll match the higher cost or the higher value that CarMax is providing you. Um, the other benefit to trading with Tesla is this. In states like Florida, you get a tax incentive. So let's say you are buying a Model 3 and you're trading in, say, a Honda Accord. If you get a vehicle in Florida uh, appraised for, say, 10000 your uh, Model 3 is now going to have $10,000 less, and then now you're taxed in Florida on the lower value of the car I think most after states the trade-in right. value is applied. Yeah. So, again, you might want to look in. I, I don't know, obviously, the laws in, um, in the St. Louis area, but if you at least look to find out what your trade-in policies are uh, in the state, you might be able to have that as an incentive. So, yes, you can sell privately. But some states, obviously, you have to pay tax, sales tax on the trade. Uh, but if you do it through a dealer, you might actually find an incentive that way. So yeah, find I, out what your local uh, uh, limits are. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, Ontario's the same way. If you do a trade in whatever, there are tax advantages because you're paying on the lower amount. Yeah, the same in Quebec. So, yeah. I think that's kind of universal anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, moving on here. Uh, next question comes from Max. He says, "Does the hey, it's a Model Y question. Love, yeah. Lovely. Does the Model Y have an inside-facing camera in the rearview mirror, much like the Model 3 does? That's a very good question. You know what? Um, I rode in the Model Y, and it's literally something I didn't even look at. Now, I do have oh. footage. <laughs> I do have footage, and I will have to review it to answer that definitively. I'm going to take a stab here. The prototype may or may not. Um, the production one... If they don't have a camera, then we know definitively that Tesla's abandoned the whole idea. Let's put it that way. So, so very good question. I wish I had the answer, but I'm going to have to look at my footage and, and brighten it up because it was so dark that night. I was going to say, at night, anything. I'm not sure you would see much. Yeah. And, you know, something like that, um, they may or not have put it into uh, into a prototype. I mean, yeah, if they pulled the housing off a parts bin off a of Model 3, there's entirely a chance it, it's I probably there, but... Who knows? I'd put money that that's what they did. Again, you know, they went for such a super high reusability of parts. Yeah. But because these were prototypes, that might not really be tell us anything about whether or not the car's going to have in production. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the model the Model Three prototype had a black matte finish, and that never made it to production. So true. Uh, true. True. I will say this, and I did say it in my video. <laughs> Alcantara, the, baby. The, the Model Y had an Alcantara headliner. Yeah. That's it. I can't. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Alec interrogate. And Eric's done. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> All right. Next question comes from MJ. I wanted to get each of your guesses on whether level five can be achieved with hardware three or FSD yes. computer. Yes. Yeah. Um, very, I say very yes. 
clear about that. Sure, because um, the podcast whose name I can never remember that we listened to, what was it about Arc. six weeks ago? Thank you, Ark Invest, is it? Yes. Um, yeah, that's all he was talking about. Is he saying, yes, that's it. The, 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 the hardware we have is is level five capable, and it's just you know finalizing the software and then getting regulatory mm-hmm. approval. So I per- think that's hard. Personally, right? you know what? I, personally, I look at level four and level five, and I, I find the differences to be quite nebulous. It's like it's not definitive. Like they don't come and say it's this, 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 and this. It's just like mm-hmm. oh, it's kind of wishy-washy. So I don't know. I mean, my opinion is is that I do believe that Tesla's going to be feature complete by the end of this year. Elon's very clear about this. Um, regulatory approval, as we know, is a different matter entirely. Um, there are always going to be edge cases. Look, the whole idea with um, with with self driving. I don't think the end game is to be like, we're going to have the coolest cars in the world where you can get in, type in an address, and then sit in the back seat and sip on your Mai Tais let the car do the work. I think the whole purpose of why Tesla is doing autopilot the way they are and releasing it as they go is to improve safety. That's the whole thing. So you can't put it in your mind that full self-driving is going to eliminate accidents once and for all. That's impossible. You can't do that. There are edge cases for everything. So... As we go, I mean, we've seen a number of accidents with autopilot, and it it happens. It's just one of those things. So, you know, you can't have it in your mind that this thing is going to be the safest thing in the world um, if you're not paying attention. And this is the thing that that even Tesla's done. And if you read the latest blog post they put in there about Navigate on Autopilot with the lane change confirmation being gone, they make it very point now that you have to be attentive at all times. So... Yeah, the end game is to get to something where you can get in the car and let the car do the majority of the work. But, you know, I don't know, man. I think we're still a few years off for this stuff. Well, he he claims that they're going to get there. Now, I I agree the timeline's super aggressive. But, I mean, the the goal is to be able to fall asleep in the car. That's kind of the reference point that he always Mm -hmm. quotes Mm -hmm. when he talks about it. So, I mean, uh, when's that going to be? Tick, 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 tick. Spin that big wheel. (laughs) That's right, Bob. Yep. Uh, All right. My, my guess is that it'll happen before we have grandkids. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't even have kids yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's a very it. safe bet. That is, that's, yeah. Well, that I'm going to have kids? <laughs> that, oh. that's, I'm not, there's a greater chance this car is going to actually have a level of five before I have kids. We'll see. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> okay, then. All right, next question comes from Dan Slubin. He says, uh, regarding Model Y, what is the cargo room in cubic feet of the Model Y with the second row seats up? Well, uh, can't answer that definitively because we know that Tesla has said 66 cubic feet. That's including the seats are down and the front trunk. So, you know, I'm going to take a stab and say probably about 10 cubic feet less, maybe somewhere in there. Um, still better than the Model 3. Um what is the Model S at? Did they claim, is it 55? 50? See, I I think, I, no, I thought it was in th- around 30. Hmm. Yeah, I, the, the number I, six on my head was the, double the three. The, the Model 3 is a half of the Model S. I think the Model right. S is about 30, the Model 3 is about 15 cubic feet. I think that sounds right. You know what's interesting to me, and I don't, I, I'm not sure how they measure I'm look this, it up. but keep talking. I, I, sort of, I sort of think of it like if you have the seat back and then you fold it down, when it's folded down, it's now. <laughs> Just it's just you're just shifting where the thing is. How does the volume change because the seat is up or down? I've always uh, wondered that. Well, no, well, I, but, I, I can answer that. It's because when the seat's in the upright position, that's considered passenger space. You can no longer allot it to cargo. I mean, you and I, of course, know that you could put boxes there, right? But there's right. The, no. When the seat is up, no, that only a person goes there. That's how they calculate. The minute you that, fold it down, now you sounds, can put boxes. That, I mean, forgive me. This sounds asinine and stupid. Yeah, but I've, I had I had a Honda Fit that I drove to California with all of my cargo in there, and you know, like seats up down, like I had it split with the sixty thirty, like it didn't matter. Like mm-hmm. it's just weird that we're doing calculations on seats have to be folded down when the overall volume inside the car is not changing. All you're changing is the position of the seat. No, but I think it's to guide consumers. It's like, okay, if I have the seats up, presumably I want to carry four or five people. So how much space is left to carry cargo? So seats up. I and I'm with you there, but I also argue that most people don't know how big things actually are. Like if I, if I were to fill a duffel bag worth of stuff and I'm going on a plane, I guarantee the person doesn't. Like there's a reason why airports have those things. You have to put your luggage in to see if it fits or not, because people yeah. generally do not know what their stuff in is. In my experience recently, they haven't been using them because I see people <laughs> falling small office buildings onto the plane, and I'm like, I'm really? 
Like, how did you get that in here? Like, not only that, I mean, it's cubic feet. Like, if you yeah. go, oh, my, my, how, how big is your bag? Oh, it's about this. Like, these, yeah. they're using hand gestures. Like, yeah. well, no, how big is your bag? They don't know. So, I, I don't just know. Look- it's always, it's, I always found it weird that, that we measure it, like, the seat has to be folded. I mean, you're not, it's like filling a glass of water with ice cubes. Like, as the ice melts, the glass is not going to overflow with water because the ice is displacing as it turns into liquid. It's just going to fill the space that was consumed by. This is a science class. I, I don't want to get into it. Let's <laughs> Sorry. Just say it. We're okay. You know, j- just 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 for oh shoot, it's not working. Um, anyways, I just looked it up here. The Model S is thirty cubic feet, and the Model X is eighty-eight cubic feet. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So that's the space. There's there's it. your answer as far as that's concerned. By the way, <laughs> when you have passengers in the car, you know. It's well, there's no way that mine has eighty-eight cubic feet with the six-seat variant because those six seats are. You can only no, move them. They don't fold or nothing, right? That would be the five-seater number, wouldn't it? I would say that's the five-seater number. Yeah. Well, the five or this. Oh, yeah. You were saying was, about passengers. You can't yeah. count that for the seven. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I sat in an iPace on Earth Earth Day. No, uh-huh. Earth Hour. Earth Day. Went down to Super Charger. Yeah, so no, Earth Hour. Went down to Earth Hour. Somebody showed up with an iPace just for fun. A dealer sat in it. I don't know how the hell they're comparing that with a Model X. That is not no Model X. It is tiny inside. It's a small crossover. The Model X is cavernous compared to that car. I'm sorry, digress. But how, how would you compare the iPace to the Model Y, having sat in both? Model Y has even more room than an iPace. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, there's I not going to be any comparison. It's it's, it's not Dropping super like roomy. No, it's um. I mean, it's a got lot. a nice interior, nice yeah. fe- features and finishes and stuff, but it felt. The center console is higher. The dash is closer. The back seat is tiny. There's a lot more it, furniture. Is how it's I would a lo- describe it. Yes, there's. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, there's more furniture. Um, yeah, if somebody's shopping an iPace against a Model Y and they want cargo, there's no competition. The Model Y is going to win absolutely. So no, I, I think Jaguar went like, okay, all those people that are freaked out by this kind of like weird Bauhaus sensibility of the new Tesla well, interiors. I get that. It's like, yeah, here's the here's the electric car for people who want the traditional car experience, right down to it making the fake six cylinder sound. You know, so <laughs> that's kind of the market. Hey, respect. If you want to carve out that little niche of people who want old old tech interior or whatever, if that's what appeals to you, you know, knock yourselves out. Mm-hmm. Every, courses for courses, right? Okay, we have some more viewer questions. Let's move on here. Jason Klatt asks, I bought Autopilot nine months ago after purchasing my Model 3. If I was to get into an accident so bad that the insurance wrote off my, wrote off my car and then I had to go out and get a new Model 3, am I able to transfer Autopilot from my old car to the new one? That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to take a stab here and say no because it's considered attached to the car. It's not attached to the person. This is kind of the way I'm interpreting it at this point. Now, the only way you can actually truly get this fully covered with your insurance is to have full replacement value, if you can get that kind of rider on your insurance. That, that's what I have on my car. So if I get it cracked up, and I think I still have it on my insurance because I'm still within the first year. Anyways, to make a long story short, if my car gets in an accident, whatever the case may be, I get full, re- you know, just go pick a Model X and you get it. So uh, if that's a concern for you, that's what you need to do. But uh, no, the answer is uh, it does not follow you. You have to buy it again with the car. All right, Ian, this is one for you, okay? Ah, Monsieur Yannick Letourneau asks, uh, the yes. recommended tire pressure on a Model 3 is pretty high, 45 PSI. Does this affect tread life or probability of a flat tire in some way? Well, uh, it does affect tread life, although strangely not quite in the way that you would think, although Yannick might be savvy on this and is asking the question, well, am I going to wear out the center of my tires because the pressure is so bloody high? <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been monitoring mine closely. I tend to run them closer to 45, regardless of which ones I'm running. And I haven't detected um, a huge problem, um, but it potentially, yes, I, I'm thinking that in the long run, we might see a little bit more wear in the center of the tread. Just, just to recap quickly, um, your tire doesn't sit perfectly flat at the ground at all pressures. What happens is at low pressures, it tends to rest on its shoulders, and at very high pressures, as the tire balloons outwards, it tends to ride on the center. You know, that's why they adjust tire pressures for all different weights of cars. If you had the same tire mounted on 10 different cars, they probably have 10 different pressures. And that's because they're all different weights, different chassis dynamics, alignments, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, short answer is I think it's going to cause very slight wear in the center, probably not as bad as you think. 
The second part of the question does probability of a flat tire is reduced um, largely because the tire can't get pinched against the rim in a really bad pothole impact nearly as easily as it can. If you want to protect your rim and protect your tire, the higher pressure is your friend. So, um, I mean, you know, running over a nail or any sort of obstacle like that, you know, that's kind of an iffy, no two scenarios are the same. But in terms of pothole impacts, which, uh, Yannick, I assume you live in Quebec, you know what's going on here with potholes right now. 45 PSI is your friend. Uh, you guys in Quebec don't pay your taxes. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, we we pay tax, buddy. We pay no, lots just, of it. They I'm just spend it on everything. You else guys, you guys pay taxes more than we pay taxes. Yes, <laughs> we are. Tax Man, I love people. I love having a tire and wheel guy on this show. <laughs> so, Ian, can I ask you a follow up question? Sure. So, I typically keep my vehicle uh, tires at about forty two psi. Yep. Is there a great difference just with that three psi differential? <laughs> Uh, in terms of the wear, I don't think it's going to be dramatic. I think 42 is probably more the sweet spot for the car. Uh, Elon went so far as to say, if you really want maximum comfort, 38. Based on my experience of the size of tires that these cars are running, the load index numbers, mm -hmm. the weights, if I compare them traditionally to all the other OEMs, I think 38, 40 is the, the mo it would be optimal for the car's overall performance and tire wear. Mm -hmm. The reason they're going 42 or 45, depending on which placard you get. And that varies. I, I've seen... The same equipment Model 3, some listed 42 and some listed 45. It's kind of goofy. But, uh, yeah, I, we're all on the high side, and I think it's deliberate to get uh, maximum range out of the cars. Now, so, because of where I live in Florida, obviously, we have uh, more warmth here. So, obviously, with heat, there's expansion. And so yeah. when uh, I'm often driving in the highway, I might get – I start at 42 when I'm cold tire. Yeah, but, obviously, after warm. driving for a bit, it goes up to about 45, maybe 46. So if you're if you're doing what's recommended at say 45 psi, would you not advise that for people like me who live in a warmer climate where expansion on hot roads would take the psi greater than 45 after it's been uh, driven for some time? No, nope, that's all baked into the cake. Um, when okay. the engineers do the work, they assume that you start cold at 45 and there will be two, three, four PSI of expansion. So okay. that's that's part of the thought process. Uh, to your point, though, in winter, oddly enough, that almost doesn't happen. When we get the super cold temperatures up here, the tires mm -hmm. almost never heat up. If they start out at 42, they're stuck at 42. Yeah. <laughs> so you, <laughs> right. you almost want to overinflate them a little so that, to give them a head start because they'll never actually warm up. But down in mm -hmm. Florida, run the placard pressure in really extreme cases, like if you guys got like plus 100 degree days, maybe you'd want to knock it off. Like if you see it starting to hit the 50 PSI range, yeah, I'd, I'd take a few okay. pounds out. But that would be pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Good to know. All right, last question of the evening comes from Bart. He uh, asks, what's the best USB key size for the Tesla dash cam? Will we need bigger on the future? Uh, in the future? I tested with an 8 gig drive, and after it saves off like 3 gigabytes of videos, the recent videos fill the drive, and the programming doesn't want to overwrite the old ones, it seems. I just tried to get one hour files. Uh, it seems to give up after um, free, and I get a gray X. Um, if you have sentry mode, yes, you're now recording three cameras now. So before the dash cam was only the front camera, but now you're recording the two repeaters. Um, I have a 64 gig, I think it is, plugged in, and I have to go and test it or take a look at it, but I think it's more than enough. Um, I would advise, and I did this mistake before because I bought a 256 gig and I put all of my music on it. And let me tell you, the Tesla media player... <laughs> <laughs> has a fit when you do oh, that. Oh, it has a fit. I thought it was going to be okay, but every time I turn on that damn car, it wants to index that, and it takes literally 10 minutes. So I mm -hmm. would advise, don't put too much music on your key as well as the dash cam thing because it's just going to overwhelm the system. So I think in your case, here's the deal. Um, so the, the, the dash cam records the clips from each camera, and each one of them is 29 megabytes, and it's one minute each. I don't know what the frame rate works out to be, but it's somewhere in there. And it um, records them as they go. And then every, I think it's every, is it every minute, every hour? I have to take a look. I don't have my, I don't have my USB thing in front of me right now. But it creates a new folder. And, and it just keeps writing in there up until essentially it's full. And at that point, it's supposed to delete the old ones. But I haven't looked at the latest firmware to see what it's, what it's done. I'm actually going to try and answer this in a subsequent tweet or something. I'm going to go pull it out of my car when I go pick up my wife tonight, and I will inspect it. So I'm hoping to have a better answer on that. 
Um, but yeah, bigger is better, but within limits. Don't go too big like I did uh, for my media anyway. So uh, if you save one just for the dash cam, you might be okay. But uh, yeah, don't put all your media on it like I did. <laughs> I have to test it on a Model 3 because obviously the MCU is faster on that. But on mine, it was just like, uh, I get so it. Forget it's it. Recordings, this is from Tesla's website. Recordings not downloaded after an hour will be deleted. Okay. Well, that's supposed to what it's do. So. Yeah, it's but it's a one it's a one hour buffer, uh, yeah, and so it's, it says here uh, each minute of video recorded uses approximately thirty megabytes. The one hour circular buffer requires roughly one point eight gigabytes of free space. Yeah, so I don't have Sentry mode turned on right now, um, but I have done it earlier today. I had it turned on downtown. So, anyways, I'll go check it and I'll uh, yeah, and, I'll and, see and, what and it looks given like. that if we're if we're looking at roughly one point eight gigabytes, if you're looking at three cameras each at one point eight gigabytes. Uh, then you're obviously getting uh, around 5.4 uh, total, depending on what else is on the stick. Uh, obviously, you're not going to get a full 8 gigabytes anyway. But with memory being so cheap nowadays, uh, if you simply get what what we're recommending here, which is maybe a 128 or something just high enough of a number, you should be fine. Yeah, the thing you have to also remember, too, that uh, Sentry Mode has some pretty big blind spots. So, you know, those, uh, you know, the quarter panels in front of the car, it's only recording backwards. So there's some blind spots between the middle camera and where the repeaters are and in the back, too. So there's more room for improvement. If they want to do it later on, they can activate the rear camera and then the two side B-pillar uh, B cameras. So, again, if we're talking about 1.8 gigabytes per camera, yeah, you know, do the math and then uh, multiply from there. I mean, on the front camera, there's three cameras, but they only really need to record from one. So, yeah, do the math and uh, you can figure it out. But I think I think you'd be fine. 64 gigabytes somewhere in there. I mean, it's so cheap. It's ridiculous. Also, quick shout out. How about Tesla Tino? Yes. Our friend Raphael said with that video. I was just going to say. I, speak. I mean, say. his numbers on Twitter are going through the roof, but he captured that. Him. If you haven't seen it, yeah, uh, go to epic. his channel on YouTube or search for him on Twitter at Tesla Tino. Uh, he put out a I'll video. I'll put a link in the video of description. A of a friend of his who has a Model 3 and using sentry mode was able to capture a person keying his car. Oh. Uh, I, I, There's been presumption the person's been arrested. We don't really know. Yeah, they uh, have but been. But it's, uh, it's up there. It was confirmed. Yeah. Sentry yeah. justice. Sentry oh, justice. Man. That's yeah. right. So, yes, don't be keying people's cars, folks. That's not a cool thing. Let, literally never touch somebody else's property. That's the way I say yeah. it. Don't touch other car people's is. cars. It's like, don't touch my wife, don't touch my car, everything else, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, uh, come to the end of the show pretty much. Any closing thoughts before we sign off? No? No, it's all good. Really, it's, I think it's, we've done it. It's been a long day. Yeah. It's... All right, well, Ian, let's start with you. Where do people find you on the Internet if they want to have a chat with you? Well, uh, on Twitter, it's pretty straightforward, at Ian Pavelko, my name, all one word. Um, on the um, Tesla Owners Online Forum, you can find me, uh, Mad Hungarian, Mad Space Hungarian is the handle. And uh, any really in-depth questions you have about wheels, tires, technology, Quebec weather, whatever the hell you feel like chatting about, that's the better spot. I Quickies, I'm happy to do on a private message on Twitter, um, but anything really long and what? intense, we'll go into it. What? <laughs> Quickies? <laughs> oh the mind reels uh so yeah so yeah I'll, I'll, by all means send me send me a message on um on the um on the forum and i'm happy to talk about stuff ad nauseum uh or call yeah. him at home he'll leave he'll even uh, take your call on the air no that's that's where we draw <laughs> the line around here otherwise it'd be 24 7 bridge knows this so it's kind of like <laughs> And of course, and there is. Don't forget the t-shirts. Exactly. Link I'm will right. be in the video in the podcast description. Mad I'm, Hungarian's I'm, Airwear. Exactly. So it's the Evolvewear, sir. Evolvewear. Evolvewear. Yes, sir. <laughs> Airwear would be cool. Though. Maybe I could do a line of plain stuff. Yeah. So yes, Mad Hungarian's Evolvewear on teespring.com. T-E-E spring, all one word, dot com. And you can find yourself this, the WMA, and... Uh, they were very popular. We saw a number of them down at the uh, Model Y review. I was thrilled. I was so yeah. I was happy so too. stoked to see that. It's so and really lovely to see that people are supporting it. It's, it's very excellent. Very nice. Thank you all. And Eric, how about you? Where can people find you if they want to have a chat with you? Sure, you guys can find me on Twitter at ecfix. That is E C F I X. 
And lastly, you can find me on Twitter. I'm very active. The handle's Model 3 Owners, but the forum is called teslaownersonline.com. You can find that anywhere. It's Model 3 Owners Club still works. You can reach it there. But uh, we decided to rebrand just because we just don't want to do just Model 3 anymore. We want to cover everything Tesla. And I uh, want to say a big shout out to our sponsors. That is uh, Fine Labs, uh, Doolaband Insurance, and our uh, great guys at Evanex who have been supporting us right from the beginning. Thank you very much. And lastly, if you'd like to support the show, you can check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Model 3 Owners Club. I'll get around to changing the URL eventually, but that works for now. And uh, any little support helps keep things going. Anyways, that's it for tonight, and we will catch you next week, same time, same channel, hopefully. And thanks for watching and listening. We'll see everybody next time. Boss, watch the ball.